Hi, my name is Jonathan Hicks. I'm back at the Dice Cup, and today I'm joined by Mark, Rob, Steve, and we've just finished playing. Gaia Project. Now this is, you can see underneath it says a Terra Mystica game. It's essentially a re-themed Terra Mystica in space. Now I'm going to assume you already know how to watch Terra Mystica. Um, I'm going to link to our video of it below, so do watch that if you have no idea what Terra Mystica is. Um, and a lot of it is very similar, but there's quite a bit that added on as well. So everyone gets a faction board, like a Terra Mystica, with its own special power. I was the lanterns in this case, and you're trying to expand on the board, but instead of various bits of land, you've got these planets here. So the different colours of planets have to match the colour that you start out, so we were blue in this case. So you pick a starting place, and adjacency is considered to be two hexes. So from here, I was able to then build on here, uh, and there's a, an equivalent of shipping, if you like, um, track, and in fact there's a whole bunch of tracks which I'm just going to show you before we talk about anything else. So over here, you've got all these tracks. This is like the temple tracks from Terra Mystica, but it also combines a couple of other things. So this one up the left is how far you can travel through... Sorry, this is like your terraforming track, it's like the spade track if you like. This one, you can see the little range things here, that's like your shipping track from Terra Mystica. And then you've got various different types of resources. So you've got blue, which is like knowledge, that's like the priests from Terra Mystica. You've got basic, um, sort of like your workers, your money and your power. Then you've got these, uh, the purple um, little, what are these things called? Uh, when you Gaia, terraform. Gaia Formers. Gaia Formers, that's quite important, I'll talk about that in a second. And then these special little green crystals, QICs I think they might be called. You can build, uh, in fact the little summary thing is over here. So we were blue at the top here, so you terraform in the same way you would in Terra Mystica. So I need sort of two digs if you like to get from a black planet around to a blue planet. But green planets can be built on by anybody, those are the Gaia planets and they're quite important. So here is a Gaia one. But there's also various purple planets around the board that no one can build on. And that's why these become important. So this track I was showing over here is how you get them, you unlock them. But once you've got one of these, you stick it on a purple planet, and then there's this extra little Gaia phase where all the purple planets you can see here get converted into green Gaia planets. Uh, a couple of other differences then. You have the normal power wheels, except there's this extra section. If you want to acquire... Uh, one of these terraforming what's it's here then you actually have to remove six power from all, anywhere on all your bowls they all get removed and at the start of the next round they get added back into the bottom bowl so that makes it tricky working with the power just adds an extra element to that uh, much of the building cost is the same in terms of you start with your basic mines in this case you upgrade them to the trading stations etc and instead of getting favor tiles, we now have these kind of tech trials, which are going to give you lots of different income. But interestingly, every time you take one of these matching tech tiles, you go up on the appropriate tech tree. In terms of end game scoring, you are getting, uh, there's two main things that are going to vary. You can see we've got tiles here from game to game. In this game, we're getting points for as many buildings as we have in cities. Uh, they call them federations in this, but it works the same way as cities in Terra Mystica. And this one is getting you points for as many different colored planets you can get on as possible. But then this one is getting you quite a lot of points for where you are on these sort of temple or tech tracks, if you like. Uh, in the top three spots of each track, you get four points for every space you've got to. So if you get to the top of a track, you're getting four, eight, 12 points for being in that section. So going up on these tracks is pretty important when you take these because you're getting a lot of points potentially at the end of the game. There's a few <laughs> points for resources. And at the end of the game, most points wins. I haven't shown you everything by any means. I'm sure they'll mention a few things in the comments. Uh, but what do we think? I guess this is gonna be brief. Uh, the good is Terra Mystica 1.5, it's heavier, it's got more to it, so if you like Terra Mystica, you're going to love this. Uh, I find the rate, the slight variation of the race is more interesting. Some races get extra components, unlike the like standard Terra Mystica, so there's a little bit more variation. Uh, the best thing by far is the tech track, uh, mainly because unlike the old cult track, it ties everything better, it's more interesting. You gain new powers, it's replacing stuff like the old shipping and spades with things that link better. The whole thing just links better in the game rather than the complaint being a bit of a sideboard. Uh, I guess uh, bad, bad wise, it's Terra Mystica 1.5. So if you didn't like Terra Mystica, this isn't going to change your mind. It's, it's heavier, there's more stuff going on, there's more to think about. And if it just didn't suit you, it didn't. I think the one thing to say though, this feels a little bit like it's been built to a budget. I don't like the art as much. I'm like, well, the minis are nice, 
they're still plastic made, just most of the nice wooden components. In general, graph design artwork seems poorer. All the stuff seems thinner. It's like, I mean, the worst one is this round scoring card, which used to be a nice big card, is now just a standard card. I don't know, it feels like Terra Mystica is starting to hit that point where, for, where money to rise it for the cost and to build it was catching up with the actual retail price. So this is a new version, everything's just been cheapened very slightly. Still, the game's fantastic, it's just one small complaint. Okay, Rob? Yeah. Well, everyone knows that Terra Mystica is the greatest game ever made, so this is a fantastic uh, variation on it. Um, with, uh, with the cheapness, I agree, but um, the problem is this this is Terra Mystica and Terra Mystica Fire and Ice in one box, so it kind of, value-wise, it's not too bad. The tech track is great, it replaces the cool track, which I didn't really like anyway, uh, and everything else is just, just the best game ever. Okay, Steve? Uh, you have so many more options on this, like both you say, I won't labour the point, but uh, the cool track is the best bit about this game, I think. Um, what I do quite like as well is that the tech tiles, there's four of each of them, um, and they go in a different place in every game. So if you take a tech tile, if you take one of these six, you, if you take one of these six, you will move up on the required tree. So it, in Terra Mystica, often the people go for the same sort of tile again, so there'll, there'll be one tile that's better than everyone else. Here, it might depend where it is, and it might depend what race you have as to which technology tree you want to go up on. That tile now isn't as essential to get. So it kind of does vary that, and maybe first turn in Terra Mystica, where everyone kind of does the same thing. Um, they have cheapened it a bit, like Mark says, and one thing that to, they, they've done to cheapen it is to, instead of having individual resources, you have a resource track. So if I have eight gold, I'll be there. And if I spend some gold, I'll slide it down. So I know some games do this, but I really prefer in Terra Mystica just having those bits in front of you. And when I'm planning my whole turn out, I can get these two workers and these coins for that, and these three workers. And I can kind of siphon off all my resources and see what I'm gonna do on my turn, so I can plan ahead a bit better. Um, having said that, I think it's great. I think just having more options in a game I already loved uh, is gonna make this game great. Rating? Uh, nine out of 10. Mm. 10. <laughs> <laughs> Mark? Nine and a half. I'm, I'm happy with that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm a huge Terra Mystica fan as well. And honestly, if you'd asked me to sit down and try and improve Terra Mystica, I don't think I could have done it. But when I sit down and play this, it does feel very much like Terra Mystica with a different theme, but it's better. I kind of don't know how they managed to do it, but they have improved and streamlined various things. Like people were saying, the tech tree is better. It, all the whole thing integrates more love all the new races, they do all feel very different and different from the original races in Terra Mystica as well. It's just, I don't know what I could really complain about. Mark, as he says, is completely right. It does feel a little bit cheaper and that's the only knock I would give it. I thought it was a fantastic game. I preferred it to Terra Mystica. I think I'd rate Terra Mystica a nine out of 10, so this is gonna be a nine and a half. And the only reason it's not a 10 is just because that slight component quality issue, but it's just a superb game, loved it. All right, thanks for watching, that was Gaia Project.